Today I'm going to talk to you about the Marlin firmware for configuration.h. I've been getting a lot of questions lately on uh, how to configure some stuff that uh, myself and others that are new to this uh, have come across. So I'm going to go over a little bit. This is the Marlin configuration.h tab. Normally, when you make changes in it, after you're done, you can do a verify, which is just a plain compile. And then there's an upload feature here that will compile and upload to your uh, ramps configuration on the Adreno Mega 2560. The version of this software for the firmware is 1.1.8. Now, as we scroll down in this file, there are a couple things I'm going to point out, a couple things I'm going to ignore for the moment. But uh, let me show you the getting started section. The getting started section is basically anything you want to look up and learn is outlined right here. And then others can be found on RepRap wikis and forums. So this is a good place to start if you have a curious question that you want to do that's actually outlined here. The next thing I want to show you is uh, the plain serial port. Right here we have a setting for the serial port. You can choose a serial port number. I don't recommend it because zero works just fine when you connect the USB serial cable to your ramps Adreno configuration. Then we have the speed. For ramps, the default speed is right here, so you won't have to worry about setting it. Other boards, it might vary, in which case, these are the actual increments that are used. And per the specs on your board, you can use these. Then we have, uh, let's see, the motherboard. This is another simple setting that uh, most of us learn about. Uh, a little bit later than we wanted to. This is the board configuration for the .h file. And within the .h file, we're pointing to this configuration, which is extruder, fan, and bed. And I've done a series of tutorials on output settings for D10, D9, and D8. So four of the five configurations are covered. The fifth one hopefully will be done soon. Then we have uh, extruder, which is right here. Now normally, when you begin, or you're new to this, start with one extruder. There is the possibility of doing up to five extruders. I've only done up to four on my configuration, and there's a video about that, but I can show you how to do a fifth someday. But uh, start with one. Then we have our normal filament diameter, which you can do, it's actually nominal, pardon me, is I start with 1.75 because that's what I work with for my filament type, and then define single nozzle. If you're using either a Cyclops or a diamond print head, you would uncomment this, but this is for more advanced users, so you should skip it for the moment. Then we have our power supply. which allows you to choose different power supplies that you would like to use. The default is usually the one that I show in my videos. That's the, the PSU unit. There's a video on it, but you can also use a power supply from like a computer being a uh, tower or desktop computer. It's kind of hard to work with, so I don't recommend it. 
Then we have, let's see, our thermal settings. I've shown this in a couple of videos. These are the thermistor options that you have. If you have no thermistor, you're going to use zero. But most of the time, I use number eight, which is right here. But there's a huge list of choices, so you can always choose what you'd like to work with. And down below, in this version of the firmware, you can set up to five different extruder temperature thermistors. So you have zero through four, and then you have one heat bed. Now to change that value, you're probably gonna change it to eight, like in my case, to specify the actual one that you're working with. Next thing that I wanna cover with you is the minimal temp. These are the minimal temperature settings for your thermistors. So that's five degrees Celsius as well as your heat bed being five degrees Celsius. Then we have our maximum down here. This is 275 degrees Celsius and 150 degrees Celsius for your heat bed. Now the next thing that uh, we'll cover here is thermal runaway because this is kind of important. This protects your heater from over, excuse me, this protects your printer from overheating and causing a fire. This is not the best protection. The best protection is being in the room with this protection on, so I recommend it. And let me talk about end stop settings real quick here. So we've got six different end stops starting with X-min and ending with Z-min. The first three are normally used. These are usually used for other things because of the pins. So you have the option to try them out just by uncommenting them if you'd like, but I recommend using the min settings. And then uh, let me show you end stop inverting. Okay, sometimes when you do the M119G code command, you'll get a value that's either zero or one. Zero means not active, so it hasn't been uh, actuated or depressed. If that's the case where you've depressed it and you still get a zero value, you can always change this to true when it's depressed and it'll invert the answer, so it'll be one instead of zero. And let's see, we've got default access. This is kind of important for new people. Okay, this is the guts of everything right here. This is your X. Y and Z axes. So these are the number of steps that take place. You'll have to look up with the rep wrap calculator what the exact settings are for your configuration. And then this would be your Z axis. These are all defaults to begin with. And then here is your uh, number of steps for your extruder on your NEMA stepper. So let me cover some more simple stuff here for you. Okay, sometimes we don't want to take the plug out and flip it over. So what we can do is change the zero to one and that will invert the plug so you don't actually have to remove it. And finally we have, let's see, our X home this will be an interesting one for a lot of you, because uh, I know I've had trouble with this. X-Home-Dur 
is a thing with the end stop. Sometimes when you think you're homing and it goes in the wrong direction, that's because it thinks it's on the other side of the printer from where you've mounted your end stop. So instead of taking it off and having to reattach it on the opposite side, you can change the negative one to a one and that will reverse the homing direction for whichever axis you're in. And finally, I'm gonna cover bed size. Okay, we have a, a default size of 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Sometimes you're gonna have a bigger bed that's gonna be more than 200 millimeters in one of the axes. You can change it to like 300 and then you'll know your bed size. But uh, that's just a uh, very basic tutorial on Marlin settings for a new user. So if you like my video, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.